Hi, I'm Ben Canning, and this micro lecture is on the model of the atom. As always, you need three or more bullet points worth of notes, a one to two sentence summary, and two to the follow-up questions on Google Forms. All right, so today we're going to look at what are the parts of an atom. In other words, what makes up an atom, and what are its major characteristics. So if we think about a pencil, like this one right here, we can break down the stuff that's in the pencil lead into smaller things, much like what you see in mechanical pencils and things like that. And you can break that down again into even smaller things, where it's maybe a bunch of these little atoms, um, is what we'll call them, but a bunch of particles all connected together, and this would be kind of the molecule that makes up these guys. And you can break that down yet again into these little individual components, which are the smallest particles that are still the same stuff as the pencil lead used to start with, which is they're still carbon. Now, the way in which the carbon is structured kind of determines whether it looks like this or like a diamond, but regardless, it's still made up of the same stuff. It's still carbon. And in this case, in this structure, it's graphite. So atoms are the smallest particles of any element. Now some things are made up of multiple elements, but in this case we're looking at something that is a single element, and an atom is the smallest piece of that element that still retains its properties. Now there are three major types of particles within an atom. That is, we have protons, neutrons, and electrons, and we're going to go through each one. The first is a proton, represented by these positive charges here, and they do in fact have a positive charge. That charge is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs, but we'll learn more about that later as we get into this unit a little bit further. Now, they're at the center of an atom, so notice our atom here kind of looks like a solar system model. It's not an entirely accurate model, but we'll get into that a little bit more later. What's important to note is that the protons are at the center of the atom. Um, one other thing to note is that protons determine what element something is. For example, if it's carbon or if it's gold or lead, etc., is all determined by the number of protons in the center. Now, the other part that's in the center, represented by these little red uh, orbs, are neutrons. Neutrons have neutral charge, meaning it's not that it's zero charge, um, like there was no charge, it's more that it's a balance of positive and negative inside, but you can think of it as zero, because a balance of positive and negative just turns out to be effectively zero. Now, neutrons help keep atoms stable. Um, that is, they kind of work like the glue inside the nucleus, and they prevent uh, the nucleus from kind of um, repelling itself or pushing itself apart. So the neutrons help kind of keep things together. We're not going to talk tons about why that is, but just know that that's kind of what they do. Now, all of the things in the center right here, uh, all the protons and neutrons, make up the nucleus. And sometimes we'll use the word nucleon to refer to either a proton or a neutron, but the nucleus is a very common term that we'll use, and it just refers to the stuff at the center of the atom. Now, the stuff at the center of an atom usually doesn't change, meaning for most atoms that we are made of and deal with on a regular basis, the stuff at the center is pretty constant. It, we don't add any protons, we don't take away any neutrons, and in fact, when we do, it's a nuclear reaction, and thankfully, those aren't a very common thing. Um, so usually, what's actually changing about atoms, if things are kind of changing at the actual atomic level, are the electrons, which leads us to the last part of an atom. An electron, represented by this green uh, orb right here with a negative sign, they have negative charges. It's the exact same size charge as a proton, but it just happens to be negative. So this is actually negative 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th. And electrons move around the nucleus. Now, they don't move in nice, clean orbits. That's why I've put the word orbits in quotes. If you go into chemistry, you'll learn more about orbitals. And uh, if you take IB physics, you'll learn more about orbitals. Um, but it's not something we focus on too much in this class. Know that they move around the nucleus, but it's not quite so clean and circular as this image would show. Um, now, atoms will often gain and lose electrons as they're combined in different ways to make molecules, and this is actually what changes the charge of an atom. So when we have a balance, we can see here uh, only four protons, and we can see that there are one, two, three, four, five, six electrons. So this doesn't look like it's perfectly balanced in terms of charge, but there might be a proton hidden in there. Now, normally, atoms we talk about, uh, we just assume to be neutral, and if they're not neutral, we call them ions. 
Um, and that's usually when there's an imbalance of protons and electrons, meaning there are too many electrons or too few electrons, since electrons are the ones that are moving around um, and kind of being added or taken away as things combine. Now I talked a little bit about how the image we were looking at before is slightly inaccurate. This one isn't exactly to scale, but it tells you the distances of what to scale would be. So if we took a gold nucleus, uh, I believe gold is the 79th element on the periodic table, it means it has 70, 79 protons in there. Uh, if we took a gold nucleus and we made the radius, that is from the center to the edge, one foot wide, so about this big, if you're kind of looking at the video of me right now, then that means the outermost electron, so if we look at kind of this model right here, think there are different kind of orbits, so the outermost electron would be 3.3 miles away. So what that means is, is that an atom is essentially a really tiny speck that is the nucleus at the center and an even tinier, tinier, tinier speck that is the electrons um, that are orbiting or orbiting in a way around the nucleus and they are tremendously far away. So if the nucleus is one foot in radius, the uh, outermost electron is 3.3 miles away. So essentially that means atoms are mostly empty space. Um, now some people say, what's in that empty space? Well, it's empty. There's nothing there. There's no air there because air is made of atoms. Um, it's really just emptiness, uh, a vacuum or a void of sorts. Uh, and that's about all we can really describe it as at this level. That's it for the model of the atom. Please make sure you've done three or more bullet points worth of notes. Go ahead and write your one to two sentence summary and do the follow-up questions on Google Forms.